Hi all, welcome to my channel Statistical Analysis and in this tutorial we are going to look at the simple probability. First of all we will look at the definition of the simple probability. Now this is the definition. So let there be an event A. If the number of occurrences which are related to A is simple x out of a total number of occurrences of simple n then the probability of A happening is you can define it as PA, the number of occurrences related to A divided by the total number of occurrences. So that is PA is equal to X divided by N. In order to understand this one clearly, let's look at some examples. In the first example, uh, we are going to look at the probability of getting a hit when a coin is tossed. Now as you can see, when I to toss a coin, there can be a head or there can be a tail. So my event is getting a head. Therefore, the number of occurrences related to A, that is the number of occurrences which are related to getting a head is equal to 1. Because when I toss a coin, I can get only one head or one tail. But the total number of occurrences are 2 because there can be a head or a tail. So as you can see, the event which is which I want is getting a head and the number of occurrences which are related to that is 1 that is getting a head and the total number of occurrences which can happen when I toss a coin is 2 because you can get either a head or a tail. So now by definition the probability of A happening is number of occurrences related to A that is 1 that is getting the single head and total number of occurrences that is 2 you can get a head or a tail therefore the probability of A is x divided by n 1 over 2. So that is the probability of getting a head when a coin is tossed. If we look at the second example in which we are going to throw a dice, as you know a dice is having six sides with numbers from 1 to 6 and we are going to look at the event where we are going to get a value of more than 4 or you can say greater than 4. So as you know a dice is having six sides 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and there are two events in which we can get a value of greater than 4 that is 5 and 6. So then the number of occurrences related to B that is getting a value greater than 4 is equal to 2, 5 and 6. And the total number of events are 6 because you can have any number of values from 1 to 6 when you throw a dice. So the total number of occurrences which can happen is 6. So then the probability of B happening is number of occurrences related to B that is 2 divided by total number of occurrences that is 6 and then you will get 2 divided by 6 that is 1 over 3. So the probability of getting a value greater than 4 when a dice is thrown is 1 over 3. Up to now we have been talking about single events that is uh, tossing a coin or throwing a dice but there are instances where you can have more than one event. For example probabilities when a coin is tossed twice. So you can uh, take a coin and toss it twice and then you can find out the probabilities associated with it or else you can take three coins and toss all of them and then you can find out the probabilities associated with that or else you can toss a coin or throw a dice so likewise we can have several events where we have to find probabilities so now uh, we will look at three diagrams which are used to find out probabilities when there are more than one event to illustrate the three diagrams let's look at the third example in which we are going to find out the probability of getting two heads when two coins are tossed. Now what we are going to do here is we are going to toss a coin and we are going to toss a second coin and we are going to find out the probability of getting heads both times. Now let me explain how to draw this tree diagram. We look at the first event that is a throwing of the coin and in that we can get a head or a tail. So we toss a coin and we can get a head or a tail. The probability of getting a head is half and the probability of getting the tail is also half. From the simple probability you know that. Now once the first event is done we are going to look at the second event in which again we are going to toss the second coin. So if you had got a head in the first coin irrespective of that when I toss the second coin I can either get a head or a tail. Similarly if I get a tail initially when I toss the second coin I can get a head or a tail. So if you look at uh, this tree diagram, there are four branches now in which we have head, head, that is both heads, we have head and tail, we have tail and head, we have two tails. So the problem we are, so we are looking to find out the answer for is the probability of getting two heads. So you can see that out of the four branches we are having, only in one branch we have two heads. So we have to find out the probability of this event occurring. In a tree diagram what we usually do is we take the individual probabilities of each branch and then multiply them. So the probability of getting a head in the first event is half and probability of getting a head in the second event is also half. So you multiply them and then you will get 1 over 4. So that means there is a 25% of a probability or 
there is a 0.25 probability of getting two heads when two coins are tossed. So this is how you can use a tree diagram in order to find out probabilities of multiple events. Now we will look at the fourth example which is a little bit complex than the ones that you have done earlier. So in this case a coin is biased such that 40% of the time head falls and 60% of the time tail falls. So that means you have this biased coin when you toss it 40% of the time you can get a head and 60% of the time you can get a tail. So based on that we are going to find out these three probabilities. First one is getting heads all the time and getting two heads and a tail and getting at least one head. So let me explain all these things one by one. First of all let's see how to draw the tree diagram. In this case there are three events. The first event throwing of the coin for the first time and the second event throwing of the coin for the second time and the third event throwing of the coin for the third time. If you look at the first time I can get either get a I, I can either get a head or I, I can get a tail. The probability of getting a head is 2 over 5 that is 40 percent and the probability of getting a tail is 3 over 5 that is 60 percent. So that is the first event. And then you look at the second event I, I can again get head and a tail, head and a tail and the probabilities are 2 over 5 and 3 over 5 similarly. And if you look at the third event again we can get head and a tail head and a tail like this and the probability of getting a head for the third time is also 2 over 5 and the probability of getting a tail is also 3 over 5. So you can see that I can complete this diagram in this manner and you can see there are 8 branches now. So we have head, 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 all 3 heads. We have head, head, tail, 2 heads and a tail. We have head, tail, head, head, a tail and a head. So likewise you can list down all the different branches. Now based on the questions we are having we might have to look into one branch or a set of branches so let's look at the exact questions and then find out the different probabilities if we look at the first question in which we are going to look at the scenario where we get heads all the time so looking at this tree diagram you can see that that is the topmost branch where we get three heads uh, all the time so we have three heads and then the probability along is 2 over 5, 2 over 5 and 2 over 5. So we have to multiply these three probabilities in order to get the probability of getting three heads. And that value is 8 over 125 or 0 0.064. That is 6.4% of the time you have a probability of getting three heads when I throw this biased coin. In the second question, we have to look at the scenario where we get two heads and a tail. So there are three branches related to that. So let me look at this tree diagram and then where you have get where you get two heads and a tail, you can see this branch, you get two heads and a tail, and this branch where you get two heads and a tail, and you can see this branch where you get two heads and a tail. So we have to find out the individual probabilities of these three branches, and then we have to add them together in order to get the final answer. So we here we have done that. So HHT, HTH and THH, the probability of getting a head is 2 over 5, the probability of getting a tail is 3 over 5, you do these multiplications and you will get 12 over 125 and you have 3 of that, when you add them you will get 36 over 125 and the final answer is 0 0.288, that is 28.8% of the time you will get 2 heads and a tail when you toss this biased coin. Finally, we look at the third question in that we have to look at the scenario where we get at least one head. So that means when I toss this, uh, toss this coin three times, I am looking at the events in which I get at least one head. So there are seven branches related to that. So let's look at the tree diagram and see. So you can see that in this you get three heads, fine, at least one head, satisfied. Here you get two heads, two heads, one head, two heads one head, one head. So you can see that in all these events we get one head, at least one head. Only in the last event we don't have a head. So in order to find out this probability we have to add the probabilities of all these seven events. So if you look at this, this is the probability of getting at least one head. Three heads, two heads and a tail, head, tail, head, likewise you can list them down all. But there is a way of doing this calculation much e which is much easier than trying to find out the probabilities of all these things. This is how we do it. According to the law of probability, the total probability of an event happening is 1. That means if you look at a set of events, the total probability is always 1. Therefore, if we want to find out getting at least one head, that is equal to 1 minus probability of 
not having any heads so if you look at this tree diagram also you can see that these are events you will get at least one head and this is the only event where you don't have any head so again coming to this you can see that uh, the probability of getting at least one head is equal to one minus probability of getting no heads so you can do this calculation uh, getting probability of getting no heads is getting three tails all the time that is 305 305 and 305 you will do the multiplication and you deduct this value and you will get 0 0.784 that is 78.4 so you can see that 70 78.4 percent of the time you will get at least one head